Hey listen, I'm a cat lover, but that don't mean I'm gonna save it, right? Now then, we are the Don't Tell Show. We make and critique realist cinema. We put up a new video every Monday, so if that sounds like your sort of thing, then hit the subscribe button and we'll see you there. For those of you who don't know, Blake Snyder's Save the Cat is a non-fiction book about screenwriting, often broken down into a simple beat sheet and espoused by people who argue about loglines on Twitter, along with other similar guidelines which many think are damaging the art. Sid Field, Robert McKee right. kind of... Cookie cutter structure thing. Yeah. The can in the wrong hands drag you out of the experience if you're thinking, oh, there's the end of the first act. What do you mean? Later. Oh, and now we're in the dark out of the soul. Where are you? Oh, we're into the third act of a Danny Boyle film. It's about to shit itself. Like, don't get me wrong, in the right hands it can work brilliantly. But I'm not Stanley Kubrick. Far from it. I'm an indie filmmaker and a fan of innovative cinema. So how can I survive without this screenwriting safety net? I've been musing over this for quite some time and I think I've found the three things you need to ditch the cheat sheets and confidently make a compelling script. To explain them, we've got to go right back to 1997 to one of the best gangster films ever made. Even if Time Bout don't think it even deserves to be in the top 50. Not even in the top 50. Forget about it. Forget about it's right. Donnie Brasco is a film that seemed to have gone under the radar at the time and not even resurfaced to this day. I'm not, I'm not sure why, maybe it's because it's not that stylish, it's very low key, Johnny Depp plays it very straight, Al Pacino's explosive 90s performances are reduced to the occasional impotent splutter. I don't know, maybe it just wasn't what people expected at the time, I don't know. I'm, I'm just genuinely surprised that it's been forgotten, I used to watch it all the time and I'm still watching it now, maybe after 10 years, 10 years of inactivity, I still remember nearly all of the dialogue. You don't walk out on me. I'm watching it again now with a critical eye, I understand why. You know, when I started Donnie Brasco, it was really like the Howard Hawks apothem that a good movie is five or six scenes and something in between. Right. You're watching it now, I can see that there is no structure and I can't even see the five or six scenes because that, the point of it isn't to write five or six great scenes and then surround it with filler. It's to have five scenes that set you off on that writing journey. If you had the five or six good scenes, you'd figure out how to... The connective tissue? Yeah, you'd figure that out. The structure would announce itself. And that's not to say at all that there isn't danger or tension and that the stakes don't rise through the film. Those things happen, it just goes to prove though that you don't have to go the traditional way. That was eye-opening for me. But what do you then focus on to create a compelling screenplay? It was really zeroing in on this character lefty. Me, Danny's here. Too late, the cheetah springs. Yeah, I know. Traditionally, the first act is supposed to introduce character, but does it? I mean, it rarely does. There is a big difference between introducing a character who has characteristics and is a character and introducing the dramatic underpinnings that are setting them in their initial equilibrium. You refuse to move on to the next phase of your life. One requires 20 minutes of attention, the other the entire runtime to figure out, because real human characters are complex and contradictory and can't be crammed into a 20 minute box that easily. I always loved this character, he reminded me of Ozzy Osbourne and he's sort of a walking contradiction because he's, so, he's old and cranky and sort of useless. I know. Good. He's also got a load of kills under his belt. He's kind of dangerous. He's part of a very dangerous crowd. He feels real. He talks real. You go to the bow. I'm going to stay in the stern. Fuck you. I'm getting my own room. And because of that, you feel for him and you enjoy being around him. What, what I found in there is the relationship that, that, that gave that some heart and some emotion. Which it does. You really care for these two people as they care for each other. These sort of details and characteristics really add nothing to your budget. They're just people. Put down the cat and go have a look at some. Have you figured out what point three is? Yep, it's conflict. Again, this is probably no surprise to you because the second act is traditionally conflict. Here, I'm not talking about introducing a conflict a third of the way through the film to drive the plot forward. I'm talking about introducing conflict in every single scene. Again, this conflict can be small. It doesn't have to be a big Hitchcock set piece. It doesn't have to be screaming and shouting. It just has to have some friction to it, along with the strong characterization, the real dialogue, the believable relationships that you can relate to. That's what makes for compelling viewing. And it wasn't about his plot point one on page 24 to 26, it was... Much more intuitive processing, yeah. I imagine. Fine. Let's try it. Yeah? Yeah. 
another great film that did this recently was Bed by Cody Clark. The, the whole film is set in one room, it is just a couple stay in bed all day. But it's riveting because there is a constant conflict in every scene and it, it constantly shifts and you learn more about the characters through every scene. Instead of learning from the character by seeing how they react to one conflict in the second act of a film, you're seeing their reactions in every single scene and you're learning more about them in every single scene. And that's where real characters come from. The question was, what do you think we as a couple can improve on? So anyway, those are the three things I think are necessary to focus on if you're going to play tennis without a net with your screenwriting. Five or six scenes, make no mistake, they, they can't be the only good scenes. You have to, they are just a starting point and you can build everything else around them. Plenty of character, even side characters, give them all something to do. And conflict in every scene. And remember, it doesn't need to be that dramatic, it can be anything. It could be arguing about a car, it could be just someone opening a window and someone looking over like, oh, why have they let that draft in? It doesn't even need to be spoken, as long as it's there and that the audience can see it and the audience feels something. Feel that, just that bit of friction and that bit of humanity. Sound like a chef then. Just add a bit of salt, a bit of olive oil. Forget about it. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this, people? Should we try this out or should we keep saving the cat? Answers in the comments, please. We are the Don't Tell Show. We'll see you next week.